Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless your excellencies ladies and gentlemen but we are in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution which accelerates global change global energy systems food systems and supply chains will be deeply affected it means investing into a greener and serve a more sustainable economy, climate change can lead to an extinction of large parts of our global population. How about you eating the bugs? <laughs> insects may be on our menu. Bugs for dinner? Eating insects. In a couple of years, business could well be hopping. Do the people in charge really want us to eat bugs? <laughs> Ancient elites were inspired to see people. They invent anything you can think of, but uh, no, it, it, it's complete nonsense. A uh, company is called Insect. This is the insect protein just been approved by the EU. Klaus Schwab said, we have infiltrated the governments of the Netherlands. And I'm just really- He's quite open about it. He's open about it. So yeah. no conspiracy theory whatsoever. Nobody forces people to eat uh, insects. For miljoenen mensen ter wereld, for the dagelijkse voedselvoorziening. Onze overheid. I'm Nicole Kidman, and I am going to eat a four-course meal of bugs. Eva Vardingerbroek lives in the Netherlands, which has long been Europe's biggest food producer. Now, it's the global center of the bug food industry. She joins us tonight for an update on what it's like to subsist on crickets. Your country, the Netherlands, is famous for its agricultural output. Now it's famous for insects. This feels like the leading edge of a global trend. Do you think that it is? Absolutely. There's no surprise there. I mean, my country really is, sadly, the pilot country for an organization like the World Economic Forum. We are sort of the tester kit of the 2030 agenda. So the fact that we, the second largest uh, exporter of agricultural products in the world, our nation with such a rich farming history, is now cracking down on its farms and opening insect factories should be of no surprise to you. This is not something that is just going to affect the food supply of the Netherlands. Like I said, we're the second largest exporter of agricultural products in the world after America. So this will influence the food supply worldwide. And we've spoken to farmers who said, well, this could lead to actual starvation if we're not careful. I have to ask about the role of the population in this, since purportedly the Netherlands, like the United States, is a democracy. Do the people of the Netherlands want to eat bugs? Is this happening because there was a popular outcry, bring us more bugs? No, of course not. Nobody's being asked. And I think that that's the point, you know. Nobody really inherently wants to eat bugs. When we think about bugs, we, you know, ugh, crawly things, you know. Nobody wants to eat that. Right. But they're telling us that it's good for the climate, that this is the way that we can save the planet. And that that little steak that you have on your plate that gives you some joy in life is that what actually ruins the world. And of course, none of that is true. I think that the push for insect eating is just a compliance test. Because our politicians know that when they control yes. the food, they control the people. So the Dutch people don't want to be eating insects. We understand that a traditional profession such as farming that we have been good at for centuries on end is not the cause of a modern day so-called crisis such as climate change. So no, the people know what they want. Right. We don't want to be eating insects. We want our steak. And as long as we, well, keep saying no to this insect, this insect push, we might still have a chance of eating it. But I really do feel like now is the time to say no. Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, 
so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 is a description of ungodly, unrighteous, foolish men and their attempt to rationalize away evidence of the true God. It perfectly describes the writings of Charles Darwin and the evolution lie. The climate change cultists have exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. These foolish men deify Mother Earth for the sake of ecological purity. Climate change is being used to destroy national sovereignty and autonomy in order to bring in a one world government headed by the Antichrist. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Matthew 24, 6 and 7 And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention, his return is near. Americans in Sudan have been told to stay off the streets because of an outbreak of political violence in the East African nation. A power struggle between two military factions is blamed for killing around, is blamed rather for around 100 killings in the past few days. Remy Inocencio is tracking the violence that threatens to wipe out hopes of creating a democracy there. Sudan sliding into chaos. Now in open warfare for a third day. Its armed forces against its most powerful paramilitary group, an estimated 100,000 strong. American Lakshmi Parthasarathy is trapped in Khartoum, the capital. With her drone, she captured smoke rising from the now closed international airport. I don't think anyone expected this to happen. A passenger plane had been hit with deaths reported. People in the terminal trembled on the floor. In this fog of war, both militaries now claim control of key installations. At the heart of this hatred, the breakdown of their leader's agreement to integrate a power sharing deal in 2021 between the army chief, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, and the head of the Rapid Support Forces, General Mohammed Hamdan Daglo. Now smashed, despite a coup they led together against a civilian government. People in Sudan want the military back in the barracks. They want democracy. Secretary of State Antony Blinken called for the protection of non-combatants. The UN's food assistance program has been suspended after three staffers were killed, with civilians suffering the most. Sudan TV is now off air after gunshots were fired, the feed going blue. And a human rights activist says people are running out of food and water after the past three days. Fighting continues across this country, Tony, with no end in sight. 
The Pentagon says a U.S. helicopter raid in northern Syria overnight resulted in the probable death of a senior ISIS leader. The target was not immediately identified, but officials say he was responsible for planning terror attacks in Europe and the Middle East. Two other armed militants were also killed in the assault. The Pentagon says there were no U.S. casualties and no loss of American aircraft. This morning, we look at the worry in Taiwan that China will attack it someday at a tense time for that whole region. A U.S. warship yesterday sailed through the Taiwan Strait, separating the island from China, a narrow body of water there. And it followed days of Chinese military drills around Taiwan. The U.S. Navy called the voyage a routine movement. Elizabeth Palmer looks now at how people, uh, the people of Taiwan themselves are preparing for a possible invasion, while also hoping it never happens. Taiwan's steep coast and mountainous terrain make it something of a natural fortress. But China's People's Liberation Army could well mount an attack anyway, so Taiwan is beefing up its military and training with new U.S. weapons. Michael Cole is an analyst for the Republican Institute in Taiwan. The aim is not to defeat the PLA, but to promise that the PLA would suffer such damage that it would not be worth trying to invade Taiwan. Some civilians want to be part of that deterrent. Joyce Chang is one of them. And is it at the back of your mind and the back of your teammates' mind that one day this could be for real? You might have to fight to defend Taiwan. Sure. It's um, no doubt about that. Right now, though, everyone is praying it won't come to that. But when the Taiwanese people woke up 10 days ago to the news that Xi Jinping had ordered military exercises in the sea and the air around Taiwan, they were reminded that when he says he'll take control of the island by force if necessary, he means it. I know exactly how terrible a war is. Richard Hu retired as a major general in Taiwan's army. A lightning Chinese missile attack, he says, could knock out critical infrastructure before Taiwan or the U.S. had time to react. You could wipe out 95 percent of the uh, power in uh, Taiwan if there's a war. Wow. So the, you're saying there's the, the strategic planning overall ha is not serious? Not very serious. Taiwan's military is getting more serious, but not everyone believes in fighting off China. The main Kuomintang political opposition wants closer links, and some want to outright join it. But young Taiwanese like Burton Lee and Tess Chu say absolutely no way. They were proud to show me life in this flourishing democracy that they say would be crushed by Chinese rule. We will lose our freedom, democratic, our religion, our tradition. This tropical island, from its ultra-high-tech semiconductor factories to its rural highlands where tea is still picked by hand, is now the most dangerous flashpoint in the confrontation between the U.S. and China. 23 million lives, American leadership and probably the world's economy all hang in the balance. We're going to turn now to Ukraine, where new Russian attacks hit civilians over the weekend. This despite reported intel that suggested Russia's forces were weakening. Ukraine's military is also reported to be running short of weapons and ammunition. Holly Williams visited this airfield where Ukrainian pilots are fighting on. She joins us now from Ukraine once again. Holly, good morning. Most people in this country are Orthodox Christians and they celebrated Easter over the weekend. But despite that, Ukraine says Russia continued to strike its cities, including Slavyansk, where Ukrainian officials say the death toll has now reached 10. In the small city of Slavyansk, people's homes and lives have been reduced to dust. Ukraine says Russian missiles rained down on Slavyansk. We don't know what their target was, but what they hit here was an apartment building full of civilians. Ukraine wants to stop its people being slaughtered like this. And documents recently leaked from the Pentagon appear to show that Ukrainian air defences are dangerously depleted. But they'll soon be getting a Patriot air defence system from the US, with more on the way from Europe. 
bolstered by new weapons, a Ukrainian counter-offensive against Russian forces is expected to launch in the next few weeks. And at this airfield, hidden amongst farmland, we were taken to see some of their most valuable assets. Ukrainian helicopter gunships fly 20 feet above the ground to avoid detection, targeting Russian positions. Iran said to be rallying allied terror groups to launch coordinated attacks on Israel. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Iranian aggression is rearing its ugly head on a number of fronts. The Iranian president openly addressed Hamas terrorists for the first time, only days after its Revolutionary Guard coordinated murderous attacks against Israel. A Wall Street Journal report claims that Iran directly coordinated the rocket fire at Israel earlier this month from Lebanon, Gaza and Syria. ILTV's Steve Leibovitz reports. It was an unprecedented move for the Iranian president, delivering a virtual address directly to the Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists in Gaza. His message was ominous. President Ebrahim Raisi told hundreds of terrorists gathered in Gaza attending so-called Jerusalem or Al-Quds Day events that Iran would raise its level of involvement in armed attacks on Israel. It turns out it had already done so. During the ceremony, Hamas leader in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, celebrated rocket attacks on Israel from southern Lebanon, Gaza, and Syria. This in recent days following the pretense of the police raid on the Temple Mount, incited by Palestinian rioters holed up in the mosque with weapons. According to the Wall Street Journal, Iran is now directly coordinating attacks on Israel. The report indicates that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quds Force, directly coordinated Hamas rocket attacks from areas in Lebanon with Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah. The Revolutionary Guard is a U.S.-designated terrorist organization. Earlier this month, 34 rockets were fired from southern Lebanon into northern Israel, injuring three people and damaging several buildings. Most of the rockets were intercepted. Volleys of rockets were also launched by Hamas from the Gaza Strip that same day. In an interview this weekend, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pointed the finger directly at Hezbollah and insisted that Israel retaliated by hitting Hezbollah targets in Lebanon in addition to Hamas. In recent years, Israel has acted to counter Iran's entrenchment near the northern border by conducting multiple airstrikes on Iranian targets in Syria. Strikes late last month attributed to Israel and Syria killed at least two Revolutionary Guard military advisors. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49. The prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. We begin tonight with another mass shooting in America. It is the 32nd so far this month and the ninth of the weekend. It happened here at a dance hall in Dadville, Alabama. It's a community about 60 miles northeast of Montgomery. At least four people were killed, about two dozen injured, mostly teens. 
Alabama investigators are looking into reports that first there was an argument and then gunshots. It was all part of another crime blotter weekend of gun killings. Oh my God. Dadeville, Alabama, targeted by mindless gun violence. Inside this dance hall, gunshots rang out. A sweet 16 party became a mass murder scene. What we've dealt with is something that no community should have to endure. Witnesses report that there were multiple shooters, but so far, police have made no arrest in this case. Omar, you certainly don't think of a Sweet 16 party as a deadly place, but that is the world we live in today, unfortunately. Good morning to you. When people say it can happen anywhere, this is what they mean. Dadeville is small town USA, population just over 3,000. The venue where it happened, right behind me, right on the old main street. That dance studio? used to be the old bank. And for teenagers, this was probably the place to be this weekend, a birthday party. Everybody was probably talking about it, a sweet 16. And then on Saturday, the unthinkable happened again. Oh, oh my God. After Saturday night's deadly shooting at Mahogany Masterpiece Dance Center, ambulances, police cars, and parents descended on the local hospital. It was people's everywhere running and yelling and crying and going on. I got shot right here, right here. 18 year old Tanaya Cox was shot three times. She says she saw multiple gunmen inside the dark club. I just saw two in the bathroom and that's why I ran. Police have not released any details about the suspect or suspects and would not say if anyone is in custody for the attack. We'll never be the same. Pastor Ben Hayes led a vigil for the victims Sunday night. Most of the kids there were from Dadeville. This impacted us a lot. He says one of the deceased is senior star athlete Phil Dowdell. It was his sister's birthday party. Their mother was also shot. Dowdell was just weeks from graduation and recently committed to play football at Jacksonville State next year. He was a good person. Daquan Das says he was with Dowdell at the party, but the two ran in opposite directions when the shooting started. I was standing right, I was standing right beside him. That thing no suing on. I think he went right into it. I went absolutely. I wish I could have pulled him out. Police have been very tight-lipped about this investigation. There's a lot we do not know. We don't know how many suspects they're looking for or how many suspects they're looking for, if it's one, two, based on what witnesses are saying. We don't know what kind of gun was used. We don't know the motive, but we're hoping to learn more at a press conference later on this morning. Louisville, Kentucky, also grieving. On Saturday night, at least one shooter fired into a crowd of hundreds in a city park. Two people fell dead, four more wounded, in a community still reeling from last week's bank massacre. This has been an unspeakable week of tragedy for our city. This American front line never seems to go away. What to do about gun violence? With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse? as the time of Christ's return draws near. If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel vs. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump. The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe v. Wade. Legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Although Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court on June 24, 2022, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015. Overfell v. Hodges. The Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, 
America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. Teen Takeover terrorizes Chicago as hundreds of teenagers destroy property, attack tourists. We saw another large gathering advertised as a teen trend on social media, and it caused chaos downtown last night. A huge police response was called to Washington and Wabash, where crowds were seen fighting and blocking streets. Two teenagers were shot in the midst of it all. These events happened hours before curfew in public places where residents go to gather. But the groups, well, they became unsafe when they started flooding into the streets. You can see that regular weekend evening traffic was just trying to get by, but young people were coming from all ways, running from group to group through the streets. Police tried to manage traffic as kids were jumping on and kicking cars, even chasing after them. We even sent our own crew to the scene. They couldn't even get out of the vehicle because groups of people were surrounding the truck. And then gunfire. Just after 9 o'clock, one 16-year-old boy was shot in the arm and another 17-year-old was struck in the leg. Now, this was downtown, but on Friday, something similar happened at 31st Street Beach. It was a lot of cops here, but they were still outnumbered. It was so many teenagers that showed up, and they tried to, they tried to keep the peace and keep them under control. And this witness didn't want to be identified, but said people were dancing on cars. One car was driving in circles. He believes it is the one that is seen here that caught fire. And when gunfire was heard, they dropped to the ground. A 14-year-old boy was shot in the leg. What's it going to take? The community has to step up. Parents got to step up. We can't keep blaming politicians and waiting on them. It starts with us. It's going to take us to save us. This woman and her husband were attacked in their cars. They waited for a light to change. The guys are jumping in my car. My husband go to the hospital. What did they do? Because the guys are put in their face. Huge mob ransacks California gas station. Police outnumbered. A mob of looters ransack a Compton gas station, and it was all caught on camera. Video into our newsroom shows hundreds of people crowding in Arco near Central and Alondra. After smashing the door, dozens of looters flooded into the store, grabbing anything they could. L.A. Sheriff's deputies tell us there were thousands of dollars worth of merchandise stolen and a thousand more in damages. This as deputies deal with numerous street takeovers throughout the city. Deputies say they couldn't intervene because of safety concerns as they were very outnumbered. Only one arrest was made last night related to those takeovers. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The Jersey Shore beach town of Ocean Grove is cutting the ribbon tomorrow on a new pier built in the shape of a cross. The 500-foot-long pier replaces one destroyed by Superstorm Sandy in 2012. Now, some residents have objected to the pier's shape, expressing concerns over putting a religious symbol in a public beach space. But the president of the organization backing the project says Americans are free to exercise religion even in public places. Amen, Hexa. Amen. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I read the FoxNews.com article about this, and it lays out the history of this town. It's long been a Christian town, proud mm. of it. This was all paid for with private funds. My pastor is actually quoted in that, and he said, this is not political, this is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And for this town, it's historical. This is how we should be boldly standing up for our faith and what this nation was founded on. You don't have to go to the pier if you don't want to. You don't have to live in the town if you don't want to. But if the town believes in Jesus Christ as their savior and they want to put it on the pier and allow more beautiful views, great. This is, this is the kind of old stance people should take. Tell you right now, Dagan, when I read about this, I was like, well, I'm looking for a house there in that town. Yes. <laughs> well, look at me. I don't smile. <laughs> You're so sweet. I'm the biggest. You're so happy. I'm a walking bucket of grump. Cute. And um, <laughs> no, I, I think that it will actually help tourism. Like Absolutely. people mm -hmm. will want to go and visit 
at visit this pier, but also be part of that spirit. And Dawson. I want to commend the Ocean Grove Camp Meeting Association President Michael Badger uh, for leading this. You know, we often talk about what's the solution to violence we see playing out in our country, our young people who are under attack, the suicide rates uh, being up, division, anger, and a lot of those answers don't come out of Washington, D.C. They come out of the cross of Christ, and it is beautiful mm -hmm. to see this manifested, especially so because the pier was destroyed uh, after a hurricane, yeah. after Hurricane Sandy, I believe it was, mm -hmm. uh, and then they rebuilt, and what a sign of rejuvenation, and it's this kind of healing, these kinds of solutions that will restore hope in society. 1 Corinthians 1.18 for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.